Well, it's okay, 2.17 and this was scheduled for 2 o'clock, so um, I'm going to go ahead and call the January 18th meeting to order. Uh, Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 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 Thank uh, there are three items on this agenda. Nothing that is um, coming to the policy committee for discussion of potential changes per se. Um, two of them were things that I felt like we needed to uh, maybe revisit or discuss again. Um, one of them, the other was an idea that I had had uh, that I, I felt like uh, Tammy and I had visited briefly and felt like the best option was to go through uh, this committee first uh, and then the one that uh, Ms. Pasley had asked to to include. So uh, we'll get right into it. The, the item number one is the part-time leave that the board had voted on in, we adopt, when did we adopt that? December? Uh, November. January? No, November. November. Yeah, um, That's two months ago, two board meetings ago. With regards to um, the short-term leave policy, um, I know several of us, if not all of us, have continued, even after that, continued to um, receive questions. Um, and, and so I felt like the, the best thing to do to come back and have that conversation is to come back with the policy committee in mind. Um, so, it, it, Dr. Kraus, now that two months, we've had two months in, is this, is it smooth? Is it working the way it was intended? Was, were there things that needed to be tweaked, do you believe? Um, well, uh, this affects a relatively small number of people, and since the initial, um, there was a, there were a number of communications right after the board's decision. Mm -hmm. Since then, I haven't heard any, but I'm sure that it hasn't hasn't resolved itself yet. I think people are waiting for to see if the board's going to change it or if we're going to leave it. Um, from my personal vantage point, I don't think there are any tweaks or any changes that are necessary um, for a number of reasons, and I don't know if. You want me to go through all that, or do you want to just I, have your have your conversation, and I'll chime in when <coughs> necessary, or how you'd like it to? So, so the number of staff that this in, involves directly is less than ten. Seven, that I'm aware of. Out of our entire <coughs> employee pool, right? Yes. So that, that's a very, very, very small number. And we certainly have, um, you can see from the career list that there, are, we have plenty of job openings that we sometimes struggle to fill. I know as I think about this, and I have I've thought about it quite a bit, if I were hired as a part-time person and hired with the understanding, you know, I don't get paid paid medical leave as a part-time person and I see somebody else who does work part-time and then gets paid medical leave that I know that wouldn't sit well with me as far as being equitable um, which in my understanding was part of what you were looking at with this policy correct well the equity behind it is the, is the major driving factor we have um, part-time people who, if they miss for any reason, they're unpaid, and then we have a small group of seven that if they need to miss for any reason or even to rearrange their schedule, they, they still receive their full pay. Um, the other part of that is that the leave that these folks accrued <coughs> was accrued at full-time, and now uh, if they're using it as, as part-time or half-time people, at the very least, those leave hours should be cut in half because if I had 100 days of leave as a seven and a half hour employee, mm -hmm. that gives me 200 days of leave as a three and three quarter hour employee, and that's not that's not equitable either. Um, some of the arguments that were made to grandfather those folks in, and I have nothing against those people, and in fact, I, I do want to point out none of them are ever come up on my list of people who abuse leave. We're not talking about, this isn't a good employee, bad employee 
discussion. To me, it's an equity thing. Um, you know, the case was made that when well, we started doing this 15 years ago when Dan Colgan uh, was superintendent, first of all, I'm not sure that's a rousing endorsement, but secondly, <laughs> policies change all the time, and we don't grandfather groups of people in. For instance, there's been some discussion about adding additional an additional one or more additional personal days. Are we going to say to the current 1,500 employees, well, you were hired under two personal days, so you're not going to get the third. It's just going to be new employees. Well, of course we're not going to do that. Right. So why would we do it in reverse? Um, when you look at it from a dollars and cents perspective, they would not be out anything if we bank their leave days, as we said, because when they retire, if they retire, which is a requirement for any, any employee from the district, they would still get paid out at the rate that it says in GCBDA. So I guess I, other than <coughs> providing them a benefit that no one else has, I don't see that they're being harmed in any way. Which, I, I, I mean, the, the ability to pay out upon retirement at least seemed like a reasonable compromise from the outset. Yeah. Dr. Krauss, how many of these seven positions are shared, or how many of them do we actually need to be part-time because we really don't need a full-time in that position? Uh, one, one of the seven people is in a part-time position by design, by need. Uh, the other six, three pairs of job shared. share that I'm aware of. Okay, so uh, I think moving forward, the discussion has been for a long time, to the benefit of the district, we need to... Um, make those shared positions full-time positions because as you said we have positions open every year so if we're sharing if two people are sharing a second grade then we need to go to those people and say hey we need you to become full-time if you want to still continue to be employed with the St. Joseph School District because we need you in second grade here and we need this other person in second grade there that's just my thought and I think that um, because we want to do away, these have been nothing but problems since I've been on the board as far as how you are equitable, and there isn't any other way to be equitable except for the policy that came out that we passed. Now, we talked about grandfathering. I can think of one instance where I felt like the grandfathering should have taken place, and I think it did, and that was with the person whose leave had already been approved. In yes. other words, she put in the leave, it been approved, and, so, and then we passed the policy. Well, we can't go back and take that. It had been approved. That's a grandfather situation. But if we grandfather in any of these others, we're still in the same boat. Because we're not going to hire part-time people in the future. We're hiring full-time positions, unless like that one person where we have a need, which is going to be very rarely. Am I right in saying what I'm saying? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so grandfathering people in doesn't help the situation for the district either. Though, as you said, it was a good compromise because those people will still get their days, and you were very right, those days should be cut in half if we're not going to, if we're going to do anything different. But they'll still have their days when they retire. And if they choose not to retire from here, that's a choice. If they choose not to go full-time in these shared positions, that's their choice. But um, I think that other than that one instance where I knew it was approved, and so there's just really no justifiable way, no fair way to say to that person, um, we have to follow the policy that was adopted Monday night, so now you don't have your leave. Other than that, I think it's a pretty fair policy. And, and that person's <coughs> leave was granted to them as it was, as it was Great. we did not charge Great. it. And also, I want, I want to make clear, I'm not advocating for the other six people that are in shared positions that we say hey, you either got to go full time or you're done. I would say when, whenever those folks are done working for us, whether it's through retirement or resignation, then that we, we rehire full time. I'm not saying that I think we ought to force them okay. into. I, I, don't I think just that's... think that to the district's benefit, but again, they're doing a good job. I don't want to lose them either, but I don't know that it benefits the district to have these shared positions. Could I comment like on a few of these Jeff. items? Yeah, I would like yeah. to hear from Jeff Lee. Okay, first of all, um, for each shared position, um, you know, it is mutually beneficial. I think it allows people who want to remain with the district in some part to stay, where they might have to 
change professions or change districts. From a cost standpoint, each shared position, uh, I, by my figures, saves the district about $10,000 because in my shared position situation, unless you, everybody else was getting full, all the benefits, but uh, if you don't receive the medical or additional sick days or some of the other benefits, that does total about $10,000 per shared position. Uh, with the board policy, when it was read across at the last meeting, the big concern was somebody riding out and basically calling in sick for a year or half a year, I think, was presented. But I looked at, at the board policy under there, and it says mis, misusing the district's time off policies, excessive absenteeism, and tardiness can result in disciplinary action uh, up to and including termination of employment. So I feel that the policy already addresses those sorts of abuses. And going back early on in my career, I remembered if you missed more than two days, uh, you had to show some sort of reasoning, doctor's note, something of, of the ex excessive absences. So that part, I, I, I just don't feel that is, is a real concern because the, the policy does already address that. Um, as far as the small number, the small number, if, if something is wrong or, that, or right, the number shouldn't be a factor. If, it, if it's wrong but it only hurts six or seven people, I, I just, well, only six or seven. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Even if it's right, it's right. Uh, when we went to that, when I went to that part-time situation, I agreed upon those terms. When new part-time people are hired, they agree upon those terms as well. So they're not getting blindsided by promise that taken away or any, anything to that nature. Uh, with that, you know, I do think a negative is, is you're getting to keep quality employees. These people were good employees who retained time because they did not miss. And in a lot of situations, they were kept on as part-time instead of letting go. I do think that in the short term, it will phase some people out to, to have to make some different decisions on what they want to do with their family. And, you know, of the six and a half or three and a half positions, you know, you might be looking for those over the next few years. So, just a different perspective on, on that. But I, I just question the necessity for it. And uh, like, like Dr. Krauss said, on the list, I don't think there was any, uh, any real problems with someone abusing the system no. and whatsoever. And I think when, when I retained, I also understood with part-time, there might be a possibility I go back full-time, depending on the needs of the staff and, and, the, and the school. Uh, so that's why I would hate to see something cut in half, and then that situation arises and, you know, lost, lost those hours, like, like you were saying there. So. I would agree with uh, Mr. Leak, and the reason why is because, you know, this may have affected somebody's decision from going full-time to part-time, and if you're under the impression that you're going to be able to keep your leave, then that may have been one of the reasons why you chose to go to part-time. So I would be in favor of grandfathering the, um, grandfathering in the full-time employees that went to part-time before this policy came into play. And they may not have all been full-time. <coughs> they may have been hired as part-time. I don't know, are all of them? All of them were full-time at some point. At because some point, then went to part-time? Yeah, okay. they, yeah, to have the... They would be full-time in order to get the days. And, and then, uh, like in my family situation, I, uh, my wife's a nurse, and, and we have to be very particular on, like, well, right now, you just can't can't call in, they're, they're a shortage, so, uh, you know, if my kids get sick, it, it, it would be probably up to me. And then a, a question I brought out with any part-time employee, uh, it, it might be something to consider to allow part-time employees to have a, a, a fraction, because would you really want a food service person coming in sick because they don't want to get doc pay in this environment? So, and, and that's what's going to happen. I'm not, I'm going to come in, I'm going to drag myself in as opposed to getting, getting docked. And, and, and most of the days that I've, I've missed in my career were either for children 
or bereavement days. So that, that's Which another thing. Anyway. What's that? Which are paid anyway, right? Bereavement. Doesn't we give so many days of bereavement for people, or do we not? Do that part here? time. Okay, not part time. But full time. Time. But full time you did. You were talking about when you were full time. Yes. Okay. Yes. But those come out of the same right. pool. pool. Yes. Latanya, do you have any thoughts, comments? I knew you were going to call my name. Oh, sorry. We're the ones who are officially on the committee. Exactly. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm torn, like, on... I do understand about the good of everyone in the district. I completely understand that. And it makes lots of sense. Um, on the other hand, though, um, I know initially, even at the meeting, I was uncomfortable with, um, um, in my mind, it's almost like I am, it's like you were promised a thing and then it's like, okay, never mind. Even though you agreed to it and we all agreed to it, now never mind. Because in our mind, it's not as important because it's only X amount of people. And I'm, I guess I'm uncomfortable with um, telling you that your needs and what you agreed upon is not important. I mean, so um, it's where I am. I mean, I do think that um, um, after that date, um, everybody understands what you're agreeing to. And then I, I do understand that policies change, only I don't like um, that the <coughs> changing of a policy to help our district could hurt some staff, even if it's only seven. And I don't know if any of that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Dr. Krause, what is it? I'm still trying to find the section that we added. Where is it in this policy that we added? And, and what was your rationale when you brought it to the board to add to begin with? Oh, It's uh, on the first, first page of GCBDA and GDBDA. Oh, that's that's yeah, this is something different. What's in red is not what we're discussing. Right, I didn't, I didn't bring it in. Thank you. So I'm very The reason, the reason, Ms. Kazi, that we brought it up in the first place is that we had had uh, a complaint about, hey, why is it when I miss from a part-time employee saying why is it when I miss work that I'm docked and other people aren't. Mm -hmm. And so that's that was what started the discussion. Um, you know, to to one of the points that Mr. Leak made, I would have the same opinion about this if it were seven people or seventy or seven hundred. I think it's the right thing to do for the district because I think equity and equality are very very important. Um, I'm still trying to figure out in my own mind how those folks are losing anything when they are able to retain their banked days and sell them at a actually a higher rate because they'll sell them at the amount of years when they retire versus how many years they work full time um, and I, I just think you know uh, what Tony what you when you were talking about you know a policy that was passed when people were there out of state that way you know if we follow that let's say we say okay those those seven are grandfathered in in five years we make another policy change are we going to grandfather them? And then we've got GCBDA A, B, and C to track. I just can't. Uh, policies change all the time, and there's no intent to harm anyone here. Um, and I don't think, like I said, anything is being removed from them. Benefit-wise. Benefit-wise. As a matter of fact, they're going to make money because you just said when they retire, that's at more time than where they are when we actually change the policy. Yeah. It's where not. Miss, Mr. Yeah. Lee, how many years were you full time? Uh, 18. 18. So his, his would be sold out at, would it, if we did it from 18, I think it's $60 a day. Let's say he works um, to past 20, or you're probably past 20 now. 23. You know, and if it goes past 25, he's going to get $100 a day. Instead of the 60. Mm -hmm. 
And he's going to get it eventually. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you do opt to grandfather them in, I really think there needs to be some serious discussion about are you taking those hours in half because you're giving them the ability to miss twice as, twice as much work. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And I know that myself because I went from a full-time, then went back as a part-time employee, and that is right. Yeah, and again, I want to reiterate, none of these people are leave abusers. I'm not saying that in, right. in any way, but the numbers don't lie. You've still got twice as many days you could miss under that situation. Well, and and you could, just throwing that out there, tell me if I'm right or wrong, if you had 100 days and you took them to 50 and they went back to full time, you could move them back to 100. Well, that's what we yeah. routinely do. If we have a, an employee that goes from eight hour, or seven and a half hours to six, we reduce their number of hours. If they go back to seven and a half, we recalculate it. So, I mean, that, we do that all the time. I don't have an issue with that. The only issue that I have is that they weren't promised. It's not what, what they were promised at the time. They went from full time to part time. That's the only issue that I have with it. And so they, and yet he, Dr. Kraus brought up too, we have lots of part time people that don't get this benefit. Right. And so how do you explain that to all the others? Oh, because they're, I mean, that causes more division and more they didn't culture. Accrue it, though? I mean, but they were never promised. They didn't accrue it though, right? Correct. Right, yeah. correct. They, they wouldn't not, have not accrued a, Not it. if they just started out as a part-time. Right. The only they way that they've accrued leave is because they started out and did full-time. And that's how you would explain it. That like, that's true. I couldn't come up with that. Thank they you earned it, but you didn't earn it, you yeah. know? So yeah. that's how... My concern In my mind, is, it's like I'm missing something. My concern no, is right. that the health issue comes in my family. Um, and, and I've known a lot of people who have retired out or finished out. I can't really think of any of them, even though some of them said they were going to, as write it out by calling in all the time or abusing days, which I do think that policy still protects uh, the excessive ab absenteeism, so it, that's already in place. But, uh, you know, what happens if, if one of us are, are taking care of a family member or we get sick ourselves? Even if you drop our time down to half, we run through that. I would rather see the time stay and then even if i hate to say it but i hate that time to go away because what if something happens in our in our lives and uh we need to use that time to take care of family members and, and such or ourselves uh but like i said it, i don't think it's used now even if it's a cap on what we could use in a year without the ex with the exception of some something extreme but uh, like i said it's it's a mutual beneficial situation. Um, I don't see, and to the part-time people out there, I can see where they would want the time, but when they took that job, it was never part of their uh, situation to where it was something I specifically asked, and I was specifically told that I would not accrue, but I could still use. Well, I... In good conscience, I don't, I, if we charge Dr. Krause to revisit this, I, I cannot get on board with the full, being able to use the full bank of leave. If we, if we came back to revisit, I could, I, I think there needs to be a, a reduction or something. And then if they a, a go back to full time, then you build it up, would you, or you put it back up. Is that what you were saying, Dr. Krause? Yes. But while they're part-time employees, those days should be part-time days, not full-time days that they banked. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. We're on total hours now, correct? Yes. Leave is accrued in, in and hours, hours now. now, yeah. So we're only taking off the hours. So if somebody has a thousand hours and they go from full-time to part-time, they would have 500 hours. Right. If they use 10 hours while they were part-time, they'd be at 490, so if they went back to full-time, it would be 980. Right. So that's easy to do. And not very, I mean, it may, again, so only, we say only seven, but it's not, like it might happen seven times and it happened to every person that every one of these people would go back full-time. Right. And we would be able to do that. And I think, to, to Jeff's point, as a part-time employee, you don't have family medical leave. Right. Because they don't have enough They're hours. They don't have enough hours for in. Or a full-time person. You have, to, mm. you have to work a minimum of 1,250 hours to be eligible for FMLA. Right. Oh. But now that that um, 
Wasn't that one that we grandfathered because they had already approved the but leave? They were already on full time. They were already full time when they asked for their leave. Oh, okay. And then went part time, and mm -hmm. then had the policy change. Right. Which okay. we can't probably get into too many. No, 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 no. But I think that's. But I, I think that's part of what Jeff is saying. If somebody gets sick, they don't have that ability to have family medical yeah. leave as a part-time employee. As Correct. None of our other employees. And I wasn't considering more of a like two months off as much as it would be to take day off for this appointment or that. Right. But being part-time, I'm able to schedule. And and mm -hmm. most of our part-time people do not miss because they're able to schedule that around mm -hmm. as much as possible. Do you think half is a reasonable effort? No, <laughs> but that's because it personally affects me. Uh, the fact that basically I'm using two hours for one uh, that I've accrued, and also, you know, like I, I offer to cover classes and, and fill in classes th throughout the week. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm willing to put in that e extra time as well and, and is that above and beyond your half time? Yes. And so then do you get sub pay for that? I get the $20, so you which, get, uh, yeah. which would be if I was full time and covered during my conference or whatever. Right. But it's, it's to me, uh, I, I just don't understand the, the need to cut it down in half if people aren't abusing it. I would rather see that the time stays and there be uh, a limit of days that could be used per year if you're worried about somebody really. Uh, changing or taking advantage of the situation. Dr. Krauss, do you have any two cents you want to add? No, I, I think you and I are on different channels, Jeff. To me, the issue is equity. I'm not, I'm not saying anybody's been abusing it. I just think treating people equally is, is very much the same. And Mr. Foster, I respect your opinion, but Policies change all the time, and we don't grandfather people in. I, I just think we're <coughs> making an exception that doesn't need to be made. And again, like I said, to me, it wouldn't matter if there's seven people or 70 or 700. The principle is the same. And I don't feel like they're losing anything by us allowing them. In fact, they're could potentially be gaining money by letting us grant, I mean, bank those hours and continue. But, it's also not a hill to die on, whatever you guys decide, but it'll make work. Because I probably repeat on I guess with uh, policies changing and people get, being grandfathered in, my perspective is uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say we grandfathered uh, everyone in on every policy that's changed, but this particular situation seems to be uh, one that we should consider, from my perspective. <coughs> But I also think we have to be careful about setting a precedent that we make an exception every single time we have a policy change. Because the first time that we gets do us, it. That gets us into a huge legal loophole and issue. Because once they, once you do it, I mean, it's very seriously, not just in education, not just us. I'm talking about anybody in general. The very first time you make an exception, nobody forgets that. Right. And the next time we do a policy, then that comes back to haunt you guys. I've done this for six years. I've been haunted more than a few well, times. And, and there is a grievance channel if somebody disagrees with the policy and, and there's a channel to work through. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I asked for further discussion on this because I know we've all gotten you know emails and had conversations and I felt like this was not necessarily something at this moment to go back to the full board for action but for us to have discussion but i think our opinion at this point from the committee is does there need to be something further but i think we've got like tammy just said i think we've got to be very careful we can't make an exception every single time we change policies for a reason it there were inequities which precipitated changing the policy uh, there, there was a concerted effort to be <clears throat> fair to the people you know, who made that switch that have that bank time because they could have, with policy change, they could have just gone away and lost those hours and those times. So 
I, I guess I would like a little consensus from the policy committee as to does this, is this something that should go back to the full board for discussion or do we leave it as is? I'm going to Kenny, say what yes, do you think? In my opinion. Because you've not spoken in your ears. Um, I don't think uh, full-time employees who have been good employees um, should be punished uh, for some policy change. Now I'm trying to determine is are we changing the policy or we're changing the policy to only accommodate these exceptions? No, we did already change we the policy. We already changed the policy. Changed. And it's not full-time employees, <clears throat> it's part-time employees. It, it's essentially, you've got seven people who who would they, like to have... I, I thought I heard they were all... Basically, basically what you had, basically what you had is seven full-time... You used to have seven full-time employees, Ken, that now became part-time employees. And when they were full-time, they were too able to accumulate mm -hmm. their leave days as full-time employees. And so what you as a board did in November, I think it was, was adjusted the policy to be able to say those seven employees don't have the ability to use those leave days because our other part-time employees don't have, the, don't have leave days, but they can keep those 100 days or however many they accumulated and get paid for them when they retire or leave the district after how many years it's retirement is that what well, it's it is? on a sliding scale yeah. it's sliding one of the PSRS. so you you've already made an adjustment to the the policy the question becomes do you want to revisit it for like what jeff has talked about or what other people have said as far as either grandfathering people in capping it cutting the days in half unless they go back to full time they could then get re re-established so i think that's what is that what you're asking them yes you? Is that, well, that Jeff, sense? In that case, Jeff, then what uh, you do not, or he would not lose his uh, 100 days, say, for the example. But he won't be able he to use them. But he won't be able to, he won't use, be able to use, use them as a leave day. Right. Yeah. Because right now, those seven employees have had the ability to be able, correct me if I'm wrong, use those leave days. Like if Jeff had one of his kids sick right. he, and his wife was working, he could call in and say, hey, I need to stay home sick with my kid today. Mm -hmm. He would get paid for the time that he called in. Where now he won't have that ability. He just won't get paid for that day. He would be he, the, he would dock that, that time. Those hours. Whether it's two years or twelve years from now, though, and you stay part time for that two years or twelve years, then do you lose that hundred days? Only if he doesn't retire from here. Is that right? right? If I retire from here, I would get compensated on the sliding scale, but then I would only, I would be docked any days that I don't work till I retire. So, so let's say he had his hundred days, and over the next, let's say he works ten years, he used ten of those days, and if he had a hundred hours, he would lose thirty, roughly thirty hours, because you're three and a half, three and three quarter. Three and three quarters. So he would lose Seven roughly 30 of those hours if he got to keep using his leave and would only get paid out on 70. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? So if he used some of that 100 days or 100 hours, then that's the only part that comes off at his retirement. Yep. Okay. I think that's, is that accurate what he said in what I, how I answered that's, it? That's as of now. Yeah, as, as of the way this policy is written where before he made this policy change, he could use his leave, his 100 hours, for when he was sick and he would get paid what his uh, daily uh, I'd still rate get the same been. monthly right. check, I just right. wouldn't be docked for missing those hours. Yeah. Now, now I will be docked. Yeah. He doesn't get paid for those hours that he misses. Of these seven people then, are you the only one in that category? I'm the half, I think. Yeah. I think there's... The, the, the rest are shared. I was shared at one time. And then because of the necessity, uh, the need for a, a full-time spot in my building went down to a half. So it worked very good for the building. And, and the other half was a retired person. So they just rode off into the sunset. And instead of replacing the full, I, I stayed half. So you're our need. Yeah, I'm, I'm the need. 
<laughs> That's probably debatable on who you ask, I guess. So, so really the question I think is, do you go back and revisit it and make an adjustment? Do you leave it the way it is? Let me rephrase that. Do you leave it the way it is with the changes that you made? Do you go back and make an adjustment as to, and what, if you make an adjustment, what is it? Is it you just grandfather them in? Do you cap the number of days, or do you cut in half the number of days as their half time people? I think that kind of covers the That's the, the, the options. Yeah. Those are the options. Yeah. Three options. Uh, did that uh, kind of amend this policy? You'd have to amend it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You'd, you'd have to have a full vote to amend it if that's what right. you decided to do. So I think that's what they were asking is do that's you think it needs to go back to the whole board for discussion and possible amendment? And I, I can see the, the scenario with the e equitable. I just look at it a little different as it's not, to me, it's not like the, the new part time hirees half are get time and half do not. Uh, all all, all part-time people know, including myself, that I, as part-time I don't occur any time. I'm, just, I'm, I'm using what was banked for not missing my previous years of teaching. So, I, I'll go on record for saying my recommendation is that they keep 100% of their days based off the fact that that's what was promised. Well, to you just need to recommend do we take it to the board and yeah, we'll make a recommendation at the that board. Is, yeah, that's, that's my David, point. you mean for the seven people that were yeah, involved? That's, that's it. They would be just grandfathered. grandfathered. Okay. okay. But you're saying, though, right now, in this committee, we're just saying, are we going to take it back to the full board? And you're yeah, saying yes. That's what we prefer to. Latanya, do you think it needs to go back <coughs> to the full board or stay as is? Um, I would like to at least talk about it a little bit more um, because at the time I made a decision um, I'm aware of like a few other like I didn't aware I was not aware um, they're not able to use anything if they miss and that's kind of especially now during COVID times I mean it just makes me kind of nervous that they have accrued this time and they're not able to use it if they needed it. Here we have, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I would just at least, I mean, it's not like I'm like changing my mind. I don't know, but I would at least like to talk about it again prior to it being like a complete yes or a complete no. I think if it goes back to the board, we have the opportunity to, to discuss it, and you can still make a decision at that time. Yeah, that's when you want to make your decision. Because right now, I don't have a decision. Meeting? No, you discuss no, the board it. No, because this is about policy. Yeah. Be policy. Only if you're talking about, unless you were to meant, unless you wanted to know who those exact seven people were, then I would say you'd have to have that discussion because you're talking about individual identifiable info. But since they're sitting here, <laughs> I, I identify you can, myself. Yeah. You kind of already know who yes. they are. Well, we uh, just once. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, but no, since you did it to policy, you did it in open session last time, I would say you'd have to do it in open session yeah. again. What if we ask Dr. Krauss to sit down with some of those and come up with a couple of scenarios to present to the board for discussion? Well, really, he named the scenarios. Well, the scenarios project. are keep it as is, as we voted on in November right. 2020, to let the time stay as it is and limit mm -hmm. the number of days they can take, or to cut the time in half, or to grandfather in those seven. Those are the options. I mean, he doesn't have to meet with them. We have four options that we need to discuss and, and come up with what we think as a board is. So I guess the question is, if you want, if you want to discuss it again as a board, Dr. Krause just needs to know so that he can be and I need to know so I can get it on the agenda. And plus, if they want to speak to it at an open, at public comment, they can speak to it at public comment. Of course, they're identifying themselves, but I, I don't think Jeff has a problem with that. No, <laughs> never any, I ballpark, Dr. Krause. Uh, how many days are involved, and if every one of them cashed out the maximum? Uh, I guess we could kind of guesstimate them what that impact would be down the road as far as paying out. Mm -hmm. um, one employee has 
approximately 700 days, days? Mm -hmm. or hours. Hours. I'm, I'm sorry, hours. Hours. Yep. I would have left a long time ago if I was you <laughs> took the last two years off. Some of these are above the 700 hours because prior to, let's see, there's, there's just another example of this. Uh, five or six years ago, the policy was changed where we instituted the sliding scale for buyback. Mm -hmm. And employees at that time who had more than 100 days built up have a, another bank, mm -hmm. a, a reserve reserve bank. So some of these employees have have hours in those banks as well. So when we when we put in that sliding scale, we changed it for every current employee. Right. But yet when we're making this, and we're going to carve out a number of employees so potentially. So, it, it, yeah. My <laughs> concern is 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 we set a precedent that goes against what we have done before. I was in the classroom and, and worked with Dr. Krauss and the crew when that sliding scale that you just referenced. And it's... Mm -hmm. um, Sounds like a lot of money, maybe. Between the, between the seven employees, there are approximately 550 days. Days, not days. hours. Days. Now, my understanding from Dr. Gabriel, he said that uh, seven and a half hours to consider a day on a contract with the teacher. Except for seven and a half hours. Except for operations, they're eight hour days. Okay, seven and a half, so. Uh, then, but seven and a half hours is. is well, I just want to make sure the, the days and things. So, total was around 500 days. Five. So, that'd be 500 days times seven and a half hours. Yes. Okay. But still, we're just paying them by the day. So it'd be 580 some days, whatever that salary is, and that will vary greatly from a veteran teacher such as Mr. Leake's situation to. But you're not paying them out yeah. at their daily rate. You're paying yeah. them out at that sliding yeah, at scale. The, at the buyback, yeah. it'll okay. be somewhere between 10 and 100 dollars a day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Way off from what they would normally get per day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but very so. generous and comparable to what other districts pay back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So officially, it's a good yeah, it's good it's easy officially the three, we three board members are the three that are on the policy committee, mm -hmm. okay, um, and like the three wise people, kind of the three wise people <laughs> or the wise whatever people, um, but I, I'm hearing at least the majority of the three of us would like to have further discussion with the full board. Is that what I am hearing? Mm -hmm. So, so Donna, would you put that on the agenda for the 24th, and we'll go ahead and discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, so what I heard Dr. Krause is you just probably want to be able to explain how you came to this spot and then share those options that sure. what the board has the ability to do. Yep. Uh, would, okay. So are we going to ever know those other six people? You're not in open session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you shouldn't. I just said we had not mean to public. I mean, we are we going to ever know who these other seven are? I'm going with Dr. Krause. He said they're all good employees. Mm -hmm. There was not a good, bad employee situation at all here, right. which makes me more concerned. I like to leave a good taste in everybody's mind, especially former employees right now. I guess we may need them back. And it, since we have an executive session tonight, can we tell them tonight in executive session who they are? I don't see any reason we could. Yeah, but I'm not sure why we need to know. Well, I'm just saying if that's who they are. I don't need to know. Who Sometimes they are. that flavors people if they know them or don't know them or whatever. Like it gives Jeff a bad name. I, I, I would say them. legally, I would say that I legally, I would say that opens you up a little bit <laughs> because let's say yes. no offense that it was a 65 year old African American lady and four white guys and. You did it or didn't do it, or it was the reverse, it was several African American people or Hispanic people, or whatever. You're opening yourselves up to some legal stuff. So sometimes I yeah. think it's better that you don't know. And plus, I don't want to make a decision just over knowing who they are. And right. Exactly. And that's what flavors a lot of either it's right, Jeff said, you know, that it's the right thing to do. Where it's not, okay. and so and, and Jeff probably knows who those people are, and if they wanted to come to, as I the board, a of that they may come and you'd see them that day, if that was important to you. Not, I'm not saying that they have to, but if they yeah. feel strongly about it, they may want to. But I don't think that we want. We can't necessarily share their names in public. Right. If they choose to do it, then 
then they have the ability to do that. Okay, moving on. So that that um, policy discussion will come back to the full board on Monday. Mm -hmm. yep. I okay. I appreciate you bringing that back up as well. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the next one on this list is the board advisory. I asked to put this on the on the committee. Um, I had brought this idea to Tammy and after we talked a little bit and I thought, you know, I, I felt like maybe the best idea was would be to come to the policy committee and if the policy committee likes it, we can make a rec recommendation as a policy committee. Um, background is, when I taught, I, I think if you ask people who taught with me, they would tell you I was a very reflective teacher. You know, I, I it was very common that I uh, would go back and say what worked, what didn't work, um, and just thinking how things have, in my observation, worked with the board and the committees. It's a lot of time out. You've got the same group of people going to every committee meeting. I wondered about, at least for the months of February and March, while it is this full sitting board, instead of peppering committee meetings, we have end up scheduling a full work session. That way, all the board gets all of the same information at the same time. Because right now, it seems like you've got a few people who come to the committee meetings, they get this information, and then it gets rehashed at board meetings, and a lot of the same questions get asked over and over and over again. Would it be a better use of our time to, in lieu of the finance committee meeting, the policy committee meeting, you know, and, and is time to talk about academics, to do that in terms of a work <coughs> session in February, either the week before or two weeks before the board meeting, and then again in March. I don't feel like we need to change this whole policy. As a vote, we can do something like that by vote of the board. And then I think the newly seated board needs to make a decision whether they feel like a committee structure is going to work or a work session with the whole board would work. Okay, so she came to me and asked me about it, and I said, well, when I came onto the board, that's what we did. We did work sessions. Everybody was there, and if academics had something they wanted to present, they did. If finance, of course, we did every month. Policy is usually most every month. And so that's one meeting that I'm going to commit to. That happened to be the second Monday, I think, of the month, but you can make it whatever day you want. But it was a good amount of time between when we had work sessions and when we had board meetings to get a lot of questions and answers that couldn't be answered, uh, you know, at the actual meeting. And so that I committed two days a week, two time periods for work session and for board meeting for the most part every month. Now things come up and we have to call a special session or whatever. Well now on one Monday we're coming at one o'clock, then on Tuesday we're coming, on Wednesday we're coming at another Wednesday we're coming at two o'clock and there's just all these different meetings that may be easier. So I told her, well I experienced both, work sessions and committee meetings. And it seemed like everybody came to the work session, so every board member heard the same thing and got to ask questions and heard other people's questions. And then at the committee meeting, sometimes, like today's example, Dr. Green couldn't stay for this committee meeting. So he was at finance, but he wasn't able to stay for policy. So he's missed out on all this good discussion, especially when we want to consider this first policy we talked about. So I said to her, well, bring it to the policy committee and see. And I wouldn't want to, what I think we should do is just try it for March February and March and see do you like it better or do you not so when the new board comes on and sits you can say hey work session's been working better let's keep that let's start that start our you know our calendar year out your new calendar year will start in April with your new board and or no I liked better the you know the different days that we met and now it's different locations mm -hmm. you know and you have to keep in mind are we meeting downtown or are we meeting at noise you know, because it depends, because we still have, I mean, that'll change in the summer. That'll change for next school year, but 
I don't know. I think it's something for you guys to consider. Um, but and we were willing to go back to committee because there was a board member at the time that said when she came on, they did committees and it worked super well. And so I'm like, well, let's try it. You know, but now I've been running myself ragged for two years trying to meet all the committee meetings. And some of you try to meet, make them all too. Mm -hmm. And that, has, that wasn't in the past. In the past, you know, maybe two or three board members would make the meetings. But now if everybody's going to make them, why not put them all together in one hour, hour and a half? Everybody hear the same discussion? It's going to be more than an hour and a half. Yeah, because <laughs> well, our committee it, it, meetings it, are... But well, I think it would it's depend. It would depend because it depends on what, I mean, you know, we have finance every... But a lot of our finance time wasn't really about what was on the finance agenda. But and so, it, it would combine all of our committee meetings into one work session. Yes. It, and it would have an agenda that everybody's able to add to in order to be able to discuss prior to the board meeting then, correct? And the benefit of it is right now we really just have two committees, finance and um, <coughs> policy. Mm -hmm. So we're only talking about two, but it would give us the opportunity to put some academics in there um, if we think there are things that, or if Dr. Uh, Van Zyl or Marley think there are things that we can bring up outside of the academics that are going to be talked about at Creative at Vision Plus, Board. like issues like what we talked about at the last meeting could be talked about at this time at the work session the work, so the this work whole session. discussion that we just had the five of us who are here or four of us who are here mm -hmm. over uh, the new part-time employee leave changes mm -hmm. we're gonna have that whole discussion again at the board meeting mm -hmm. where if we did it in a work session and everybody was here then by the time we go to the board meeting Question we're ready no. to vote um, it's not gonna be like any voting or any Choices ever made no, not at those meetings. Work it's, only, it's, it's just it's only exactly discussion. like this meeting. Yeah. It is information gathering. And those sharing. are also yeah. like um, continued open to the public mm -hmm. and yes. recorded. Yes. Just like we do now. Like mm -hmm. we did the work session for academics mm -hmm. here a while back. And did we just, do we have one since then? No, we're going to have one tonight. That's what I was going to say. Our work, session, work tonight session tonight for, is open. Because I will yeah. add, I mean, it is open. I work a lot and I'm on other boards and committees. And of course, the school district is a priority only at my job. I mean, I'm extremely understaffed and there's no school today. But I've got extra kids in my building and like to be able to leave was extremely, extremely hard. Um, and so, like, if there was only a other meeting, or at least it's not as many meetings, I, um, I would like to at least um, talk to the board about trying that. And now I don't know, um, Dr. Van Zyl, you could, Finance Committee, we have some community members on that committee, but those people we need anyway, because that's really truly, those members are our audit committee, that mm -hmm. audit, you know, they serve another purpose, but they could still, they would still be invited to the work session, is that right? If we did it rather than committee, and policy doesn't have community members. Mm -hmm. but it can be, but if you're not technically having a committee, you don't need community members except for your audit. We, we need them for audit. Yeah, so we have what I don't have. I'm just going to throw my two cents out yeah, there. Yeah, do please. You can choose to do whatever you want, but in most high functioning school districts, the reason that you have committee meetings is because board members trust one another that they're going to be able to go and report back out on the minutes of what was said and what was done. So the three of you who represent the policy committee were the three that would report out when the policy committee things are going to be there and if people wanted to know about it they could pull up the video watch it or see, read the minutes that donna presents so they're caught up and so if, if that's not happening by you as board members that's one thing you have to be mindful of and you still have to be able to say in a work session what's going to be the purpose of the work session at least with the committee, you know what the committee purpose is. If the work session is just to bring in, hey, I heard about X, Y, and Z, tell me about it, 
that's not really the function of a work session. A work session still is to cover topics and, and things that are pertinent to what you as a board do related to policy and expenditure of taxpayer dollars. In other words, for a work session, it would have Gabe's agenda mm -hmm. from finance today. That would be part of the agenda for the work session. And this, for policy, you know, you're going to have an agenda that addresses those things. Um, if we changed it, the people on the committees are able to come and participate. You mean the community members? Yes. That's what we were just saying. We'd have to, I mean, we'd have to, I mean, I don't know why we wouldn't want them to come and participate. It's only the finance committee. It's not like we have four or five committees where we've got to bring in 20 people. It's our finance people and they're great I know, advisors. but if we're also um, adding in other things like, um, like a pos talking about academics, I mean, I know that there would be people interested in that or like the former uh see here's where we get into stuff because i don't know i mean if we are actually dis discussing academics just like everything else the people previously on the committee they're going to want to be a part of those we too didn't as have well. anyone from the community on the academics committee the only things we had were facilities committee and finance committee that had community people okay so the only thing that we have to worry about community people is who now serve with us for finance who are very faithful mm -hmm. and who are very good at advising so okay, I, mean, I just don't want to Jesus. look like cut out cutting people out here, the here, community here's, access here's my to final us. two cents is what is the purpose of it if it's to educate you then my two cents is you don't need community folks sitting there because you're the ones who are going to have the questions. And if you're going to then tie up their time, you're going to, if you're going to do it and invite them, then they need to know it's going to be, hey, we're going to only keep you here from 5 o'clock to 5.45 and then you're going to be able to go over 5.30, whatever. So you can invite the community people, but if the purpose of this is for you to be more informed about something, then to me, I don't know what the value of having the community folks be there because that's what they're going to ask. Is if, if you as board, if this is to educate you as board members about certain issues or items and why are we here? We're now in the committee structure. They're able to ask like they did earlier what some of these questions were and then give feedback to you as board members. Is the purpose of this to um, condense like our time and to make it easier like on us I that was one thing that I saw as mm -hmm. an advantage of you know would going to a work session or trying you know February March as a work session versus committee meetings would that be a better use of everybody's time these guys as well I know it's be later in the day but because uh, I like the idea but um, if it's going to cut out um, community members on the other committee they're like ease at communicating and asking questions and everything like that I would honest as much as I'm gonna be honest as much as I don't like all these meetings crazy all over the place I would want to keep that in order to keep keep the community's access on that committee. Is that what would happen? Would we take away committee? It's up to you as a board. I'm just saying, I what, what, I'm just saying what is the purpose of the work session? If the work session is for you as board members to be informed about stuff, then if I'm a community member, I'm saying, if it's to inform you as board members, then why am I here? Because part of the reason that you have committee structures is because only a couple of you attend normally, or most school districts, only a couple board members attend, so that they can be the ears, eyes, and nose, so to speak, of the board, listen to what the community members say that are a part of that, and then report back to the board, hey, here's what we talked about, here's what was said, here's some of the questions that were asked, or here's the minutes that tell you what those things were about to keep you as, as informed as you can be. But that's why I'm just wondering what your purpose is. If it's for you as board members to be informed, then you're probably gonna have some, I'm just gonna say you're probably gonna have some community members are gonna say, well, I don't, if it's for the board's information, I don't really need to be as involved. 
that's, that's just my take on it. You may need to ask those community members, and you as a board need to decide how you want to do that. If you want them involved or not involved, that's up to you. Yeah, and if they're involved and we always do that section first, have that discussion, then they no can be excused. No intent whatsoever to cut out our community members. Right. Because okay. uh, we just said they have served us well on yeah. the, right. that committee. The thought is, do we keep these hodgepodge dates and times in the middle of the day, in the middle of your work day, or do we do it at 5.30 at the end of people's work day all together as a group so the whole group hears the discussion, the whole group. So we're not doing this. We'll spend just as much time at the board meeting on this as we did here, which is good. We need to. We have to because so many people weren't here. But the purpose would be to so that work session is, yes, it's to inform the board, but it's also to continue to do what we're doing with all the committees or with those two committees but I don't have a preference either way it just came up and I said to Lori hey we've done it I've actually done it both ways and there's benefits there's good and bad to both right. so I like it it's just the pleasure of the board to keep the community access yeah. can um, you have thoughts yeah. I'm sorry to no, you're good Bunch of them. first of all I want to know uh, have we already? Are we doing the recording of this meeting today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, John's on the camera. Yeah. yeah. So you mean for the two hours they're just going to be looking up my nose because I haven't seen that camera move. It's spread it out. It takes move. the whole. It's... Okay. <laughs> we got. We just. We just zoom in it's on you. It's not bad, you can. Uh, <laughs> no, he, he takes. Jamie, he takes I, the whole. I resent line that angle. implication. Sorry. He just takes a, he takes a picture of the whole room, like in a yeah, board okay. meeting. In a I'm, board I'm meeting, he'll zoom in on the pictures. speaker at the thing. You're gonna see me, and that's my whole intention for sitting here, Tammy. I'm sure. Just ask the press. Okay. Um, uh, so the camera it was being recorded, so basically one view. Okay, and uh, it, somehow then we you all should have sat here. You three people should have sat here, so they can see who you're talking. They. I've watched this before. They can't tell who's talking because it's got a wide angle ring at the side or the back of your guys' head. I know. Okay. I, human nature, this is where I've been sitting for board meetings, so this is where Just I came to sit, let, which is irrelevant. You know, it, it is, that's how we set up. It is what it is. Yeah. If you want something different, then you just need to tell us. Yeah. I tell, because I told you. Okay, so uh, why we, uh, them, Absolutely, I've been beating the drum about this two and three people meetings all the time. And the only way I would support going to the work session is if, please, you put academics back in these meetings here under this roof. I'm not going to just have this work session for the BOE, which they put community services on their community people, just to throttle it, um, and then policy. No, we had four meetings, four committees when I got on this board. So academics should be brought back to this discussion. If Creative Entourage wants to discuss it too, fine. But, um, I mean, I, I, the work session is a good idea. Do all three or four, all, you, do, you have to do all the committees at the same time. And of course, I know what that means. You're going to have to notice it up like you had to notice the meeting up today. Okay, well, that's exactly what we should be doing. Having all the community come here if possible, all the time. Not trying to continue with this thing where there's two or three of us. And then the first time I got to show up to academics meeting was by accident because all secretly put together without me knowing about it. I happened to stumble into it. And then they adjourn the meeting. And I'm not going to let up on that because that's a perfect example of why this community doesn't trust us. So, um, well, and you know, you know as well as I can that you're incorrect on that. It wasn't an academics meeting. It was people asking for information, and by having four people there, we would have had to post it. And we've already had that discussion about who could or who couldn't left. Mm -hmm. But and so we don't necessarily agree on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's fine. We don't have to agree. You and I know that. <laughs> We don't have to agree on anything, but I don't think it's accurate to say that something was done behind the scenes. You had a couple of new board members asking for information, and they were going to have a meeting to get that information. So, and that's and that's what I think is what I'm hearing from the work session is how do you provide information? So, sorry I interrupted you, but I, I just wanted to clarify that. 
Um, now, we've had that discussion. Yeah, we have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, but it, you know, when, when you're the six to one, then it falls on a lot of deaf ears. So, um, uh, because of the, okay, because of um, the idea of doing something fine, maybe I would suggest let's keep it this discombobulated way. Unless we can get the academics back under our roof, then I say change immediately. But if we are going to do this flim flam thing to do just board uh, finance and uh, uh, policy for the next two or three months, I mean, we've got two board members that are less than 70 days away from being here. So maybe we should wait and change it after the new board members get on and go back to a realistic, open, community driven expectation of their school board in this school board meeting, not by an outside source paid for an outside group. Which is why I suggested if we try that, we only do it for the next two months. That way, the three of you have experience with, we've done it with committees, we've tried it with work sessions, and so when a new board is fully seated and new president is and vice president determined, that board can make the decision of, do we want to keep this structure or do we want to use the next structure? two meetings in? Fine. If academics is here, I'm all for it and I'll support you. If the academics is the next two months. Otherwise, this board is too tainted to try to change now. We'll change it after the two new board members. Unless academics is coming back into this room, no. And the only other thing I would say about that is, if there's something that you want to know academically that we're not providing, you all you have to do is ask and it gets put on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So if there's something specific you want to know about academics, we had a whole work session about test scores and that. We've had a conversation about attendance, which revolves around academics. We've had people come and present new classes that are being offered. So you as a board have been involved in academics. If there's something else that you're wanting that you're not getting, you just need to tell us. Because it stays under, well, it's not under this roof, it's under noise roof, where Marley and the academics team is, is working right now. So they, if there are something specific you want, you just know to ask us, Ken, and, and we'll get that. Well, I did specifically, I guess, and I've always asked, but I guess now I'm telling you, yeah. academics back in the, under this roof. Yeah, and I'm just saying what specifically, because those can always be something that's part of an agenda. I don't personally see a conflict. I think we can try it out and see if it works. If we like it, we keep it. If we don't, we don't. And if we want to add academics, we, we put academics on the first and second meeting. Um, you know, there's no reason why we can't discuss academics. There's no reason why we can't go to a work session that combines all of our committee meetings into one. And if we don't like it, we can change it. Can I, I'd like to just share, like, with the city council, and mayor and the planning commission, how, how we do work sessions and maybe it'll help. It's really not either or. Um, you still need your committees that, you know, dive in more of an expert in their fields that they are representing. But the work sessions are when there is a topic that is, you know, it really needs maybe experts to come in and meet with the board or more time to discuss an item. It's not really, I don't see it as being in lieu of your committee. That's, that's how we do that's our work do sessions now. Because mm -hmm. yeah. like our work session tonight is about uh, salary study, study that Dr. Krauss has put together which needs to have its time. Academics was a work session so they could talk about those rather than being part of a larger meeting it could be fully focused on that so we do that's how we do it now is you have your academic or you have your committee meetings then you have work sessions about those topics that are bigger and broader and need more time and i don't i looked for the board of education's mission and vision and principles and all your guiding stuff for me i thought the absolute number one responsibility of a board of education is academic achievement and I am shocked <laughs> that there is no like Coffee. committee especially with the results we've gotten yep. since 2018 I, I mean it's deplorable. Turn around and talk to those people. 
No, I, I'm right. talking to the board. Why we are having you are responsible. The board of education is responsible, and if we are failing in academics, this committee, the policy committee, should be writing poli policies that its strategies to improve academics, and then administrators would be responsible for implementing them. I agree. Well, but, but no academic committee. There, I'm there is shocked. an academic committee that was has not been in place for the last couple of years because the board has chosen to have a conversation with, with the, the community, community about what do you want for your students. But our academic services community is still working and doing things from providing new curriculum to showing the test scores, saying here's what we're doing. They brought together the. Uh, attendance uh, advisors and the social workers to come to them. So they are focusing on things that are academic. Their number one priority is policy and uh, taxpayer dollars are the thing that school boards will tell you are their number one priorities. With the focus on students and how they perform. So the boards, that's their task and that's what they are tasked to do. And so to, to say that a board member is going to say, well, if we need to do Singapore math instead of this type of math. That's not a board decision. That's that's an they administrative. They don't choose curriculum. The curriculum we is presented to them from a committee made up of our staff Educators. members, our academic team. They bring and present that to the board, and the board then has to finalize the funding of that particular curriculum or ask questions about how was this improved and those type of things. So those things still do come to the board. That's not part of a committee. Our academic services brings the curriculum to them. It's well, like they've shown was, all the virtual learning. I'm, I was just reading policies that I think directly impact academic achievement. And, re, you know, you can hold, hold public meetings. It's great. We just would like excellent academics. We want our students to be well-educated. And I, I'm... The policies I was reading the intervention policy and I you know I'll, go, I'll dive further because apparently someone is given the uh, task of improving improving reading by coming up with what standards should be measured how they should be measured and so I'll dive further but it looks like to me this policy committee is like the head of academic achievements. It's the Board of Education's number one responsibility, the entire board. But then when you come down to your level, the policy committee, you're the only ones that can really affect big change with big policies. And actually that's a seven member board, it's not this committee. Because right. this yeah. committee has to take the recommendation to the seven members. And they oversee all the policies of the district. If you pull up our website, they have academic, student, professional, employee. It, it lists all of those policies there that this board is overcharged to see with help from the school board association uh, as far as what those boilerplates are. But then they take a look at them based upon what they want for this community and this school district. So, Dr. Van Sile, would you agree that it is the Board of Education's number one responsibility is academic achievement? And we have not done well, and the board needs to focus on I would on say it. that's the entire school district's number one focus is academic achievement and student success. Because somebody's academic achievement may not necessarily be a straight-A student. It may be like some of our kiddos are fantastic at going to Hilliard and be interns and, and working the jobs as welders. And so, but we want them to be as successful as they can be because they, we also have to know their needs and help them move forward. Well, just to be on, you know, just to be on the up and up about why it's so upsetting. In 2016, when Common Core Standards were dumped, um, every state kind of came up with what standards they were going to measure their achievements by. And the state of Missouri was the only state in the entire nation whose standards were lower than the Common Core standards. And so when I look at, I'm, I'm not even looking at COVID years, 
but just the 2018-2019 school year, when I look at academic achievement, and I know we have 11,550 some students, and I am seeing the Department of Ed reporting MAP scores that almost 70%, 70%, that's 7,000 students are not at basic or above. We have a major problem. And so I came to the policy meeting to the Board of Education's policy committee because you'll write policies on interventions. You'll write policies that I think could impact academic achievement and if there isn't an academic committee I think it all falls to this committee to look at what policies do we have in place that is allowing our entire district to fail 70 percent just under 70 let's say 7,000 students are not even achieving basic but they're moving on. The whole district's failing, but no students are. It's not even rational. And, and so I challenge you, policy committee, to, to look at, at what's driving these results and what needs to be done to drive better ones. And you can argue about committee meetings or work sessions or board meetings. Man, I do them all at this point. I pull out all the stops. There's that much work to do. And two, I want you to understand that the policy committee or the board, and this is a policy committee of the board, get, writes policy to govern. And then after the policy is, so the policies you see, those are written. And again, you said uh, Missouri School Boards helps us, but really it's DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education here in Missouri. It's federal statutes and it's state statutes that are passed every session that our policy is written around. And then from that policy, it is up to the administration, it's up to Dr. Van Zyl and his academic department to write administrative procedures. So if you find a policy, and usually following it is an administrative procedure on how you're gonna carry out that policy to be able to, um, you know, see it at right. work in the district. So I just want to make sure you For do that. For example, policy IGA, the instructional intervention, which should be kind of at the top of our list right now. Um, in this, and, and it is to meet state requirements, we're required to do so many hours outside, but specifically in the last paragraph, it says, the superintendent or designee shall determine which skills and competencies must be mastered and how they are to be obsessed and what remediation is appropriate. And this is all tied to the condition of a student promoting to the next grade level. So I guess we need to dig in and find out what skills and competencies have to be mastered, how are we assessing that they are, and what happens if they're not? And then if you obviously go to, they're not. If you go to our website and go under curriculum, then for each grade level, those skills and competencies are written, and it shows what is assessed, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And so you can find out all that information. They've already done that. They've already identified the skills that need to be. They've already identified when it's gonna be assessed and what of that is gonna be assessed. And that's matched to the MAP, Missouri Assessment Project, the MAP assessment that we give that was, um, that will we'll determine our accreditation and or our money. I mean, it determines everything that comes. So can I have sound working? So, can I ask your name because sure. we, we don't usually have audience participation. Oh, I, my name is Reba Kendall. I am I have lifetime certification from DESE as a teacher supervisor and career coordinator. I retired from the district and have grandchildren in the district, so obviously I have personal concern. Um, I chair the St. Joe Planning Commission and you know while 
we're working on a comprehensive land use plan and would like to expand our taxpayer base in the city. Uh, as one board member mentioned earlier, the chamber is pretty critical of the school district. And I think they are because it's hard to attract people here if, if our academic achievement is so low. And um, I know at Beringer Ingleheim we have a lot of scientists. They recruit from all over the world. I, I know their uh, person that oversees their entire facility, how much trouble he has getting people to move to our community. They'll live south of St. Joe, send their children to school there, and commute to work. And, and it's an issue. I mean, it's time we, like, really admit it. And, and I get it. You know, I get that we're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and having all the meetings, but we're not having an impact. We have got to figure out how, what it's going to take to improve our academic achievement. And it, it's beyond due. So I, I'm sorry I didn't mean to take over the meeting, and I, I apologize, but um, I think these canned answers and checking the boxes, you need to go back and look. How is our uh, remediation working? But can I ask to jog on that, the academics part, uh, Ms. Kendall? May start with your first question almost, but on the Academics Committee, are there any board members in that? There were when we had the Academic Committee. I can't remember. I think it was Dr. Green and, and Lori and Lori. one other person. But, but there's all this academic supposedly being discussed, but are this discussed just among the administrators? No, he's talking about no. at our board meetings. When we come to the board think of our board meetings, all the academic stuff that we've talked Different about over the last couple months. Different things that part of the board meeting. Yeah. You mean the at after the fact, after all the decisions being made, and they just bring it to us, cold turkey, to pass it. Is that what you're talking about? It depends on what you're talking about. Like when we talked about the attendance people and the social workers, we brought that plan to you because you as a board have to approve that. We act administratively have to plan and do this thing. When they do a curriculum revision, that's why the people are standing here and show you the information on the screen about here's our curriculum, here's the standard it ties to, here's the resources, here's the textbooks or the materials you need to purchase, they bring that to you for you to approve and make sure that it meets what you want it to do. And our standards are based off of the DESE standards. That's what we have to have. No to board by. members are in those meetings, though. Not unless they're part okay. of the... See, the that's fantastic. Because, we get it. But, when, uh, but Ken, that's not true. When you bring in teachers, the people that are the, the practitioners in the school district talking to your administrative team, that's the responsibility and role that we have. Right. You as what's wrong with our ears being in the room? We're right. elected. Why are, what's wrong with our, room, our ears being in the room just sitting there mute like we are at Creative Entourage? Because nine Why, times, out of, ten, nine times out of ten, you're not sitting there mute. And just as you yourself said, you need to let the experts do it. And if they're the experts in the teaching field, they're the folks who are working with those kids every day to say to us, hey, that's why we need to have something brought back like career ladder so we can do after school and before school tutoring to meet the needs of kids and interventions. That's why we brought that plan to you because we're visiting with our staff, our parents, and our community about what do they need. And it's not all about interventions. It's about tier one instruction, having our teachers understand what good tier one instruction looks like. That's where 80% of kids are supposed to be reached academically. Then you intermediate or intervene and meet them academically. The other 20% above that through interventions and accommodations just like she was talking about. But we also have talked about, just like we've said before, early education learning. That's why we expanded that because we bring, have a lot of kiddos that come behind. We have to work with them to get caught up. That's why you as a board are focusing on that. So you've had multiple conversations about academics. And again, I say to you, if there's something that you want to know academically, then just ask us because there's nothing to hide. We share everything with you guys. Can, I just want to say that after the MAP scores came out mm -hmm. and I saw the board agenda, I was shocked that attendance was on there, but no academics. Attendance and here is we part are of going, academics. We're going and we on, did the work session on academics. Uh, but I'm talking about the Board of Education meeting, uh, the agenda, it had attendance. And uh, one parent just shared in the meeting before that her daughter cried because there was 
pressure about attendance. We're still dealing with COVID. You know, we don't want him to come to school sick. But on the board agenda, after the academic scores we got, the one thing that was on there was attendance. I was shocked. And why would you be shocked? Because yeah. the kids in the school, how are they supposed to learn? 80% made it. 70% failed. 80% made what? Attendance. Wasn't our attendance at 81%? No, no. Seven, it's barely 70%. Okay, well, 70% of the students in 2018-19 school year failed. And I, I'm not even looking at math scores during COVID, but our attendance was good then. You failed what? Uh, to achieve basic. Okay. On their math standardized but you, testing. But you also realize that when the federal government said, hey, every kid is going to know how to do this by a certain grade, third grade. Every kid, every kid is going to read at this level on third grade. We didn't, Not every kid develops and grows the way that another kid does. We didn't so do that in 2018. In 2018. I'm not saying that they did. I was giving you an example of you have to take a look at the kids that we have, where they are, and what resources we provide, and how do we help them grow and develop. And that's the kids, what should go on in board meetings. And, and how is the board going to answer that question when they're not the practitioners in the room and that's who we work with? And we realize we're that was going to, I know, but I'm going to say this. We realized yeah. that was a lot longer conversation than a board meeting agenda item. So we had a two hour work session on MAP scores and that's always open to the public. And instead of spending 20, 15 or 20 minutes in a board meeting, we spent two hours on it. So you have to realize that sometimes things don't, you know, come onto right. an agenda meeting Amen. because we've chosen to give it special consideration Amen. in a longer that meeting. work session, that one two hour one, that should be a continuous process because that's your number one priority and responsibility with it. I'm going to, I appreciate um, your insight. I'm not going to dispute that we don't need to do better. We obviously do. Um, but I, I'm going to rein it back to what is here and in front of us. So I have one more question on BCE that uh -huh. doesn't have to do anything with committees or work sessions, but it came up to me this week and I wanted to just bring it up since it just happened to be on this anyway. So when you're ready to be done with the committee work session discussion, I want to ask. Okay. So my, my question is, is the consensus, David Latanya, to um, make a recommendation to the board in the next meeting to do full work session February and March in lieu of the committee meetings. We can certainly have those community members and do the finance part, then they can be excused. Or do you want to leave things as is? Yeah, my personal recommendation is I would like to try it. Uh, I think one of the reasons why we got off topic is because we don't have a place for this, these types of things to be discussed because some of the information that, you know, our president and our superintendent provided was very helpful. And I, I would like to see a platform where we can discuss that. Uh, but yeah, my short answer would be yes. Tanya? Um, I would agree to bring it to the board in order okay. to talk about it and consider it. All right, so on the board meeting Monday, I will make a recommendation uh, regarding BCE. I'm assuming one of you will uh, second it, and then we can have this discussion. With and do we board. want to do it under policy, Dr. Van Zyl, or do we want to set it as an agenda item? You can do it however you prefer. It doesn't matter. We can do it under policy then. So let's. So you'll be bringing that as the. I, I will make. I, I will word it. I will make that recommendation. Okay. I just have a question, real quick. BCE, because I was talking to a community member this week, and um, they asked me about vision first. Is it vision forward? Vision forward. Vision forward planning meeting agenda, and I said just go on our meetings and you can look it up. Um, or yeah, somehow, anyway, it wasn't posted. So my understanding was, I said to this person, it's an ad hoc committee of the board and two board members serve on it. So are we not posting those? You're not required to because that committee is not making recommendations to you about taxpayer dollars or um, 
obviously. Okay. But if it, um, we do try to post the meeting, or at least, at least list the meetings, but if it's something that you want, it's not that I hard know. to do. I, I think we're going to put them on our okay, website. Yeah, we I'm glad you brought that up, just because I've had a lot of people asking about the agenda, asking about the meeting minutes, um, just asking about um, information. And in the beginning, I was like, well, it's not a board committee, only on the other hand, it is an ad hoc. It is an ad hoc, and if we're able to give extra ins extra information, complete transparency, I mean, um, I would like to do that. After I was um, contacted about it over break, I'm looking online, and you're not really able to find anything. And then I made a couple of emails, and it's kind of added now. Okay, but the last meeting's not on there yet. Um, and so, I mean, I would like as much information about these meetings. Because it, it was also mentioned, it's not, um, it's not um, like um, YouTube or recorded or like anything like that. And I can understand that. Okay, but there needs to be at least accurate, um, at least, um, agenda in the meeting minutes and then anybody's able to go back and look at them now so you serve on that committee yes so you'll need to tell donna when those planning meetings are because okay. you should I have you eileen was the one oh the is eileen the one, the one. Eileen has the the date. okay eileen can give them to her and does she yeah. take minutes does eileen take minutes no, no somebody no, from no, creative no, no. jennifer from creative launcher she does okay uh, i know that eileen did the first meeting and those got mm -hmm. posted and then i know the gentleman in this room asked about minutes and then I mm -hmm. think we got the last two sets of minutes and posted them, but I don't think we were the summaries of the meeting. Yeah, that we, yeah, that it was posted, but I don't think the last one from last time hasn't been posted because we haven't gotten those minutes mm -hmm. yet. Oh, if Steve's asking about it, then probably we need to. I didn't mention this. I wasn't trying to call I wasn't trying to call them out. I just said somebody in right, asked all about honesty, it. Honestly, I looked at the meeting <laughs> minutes and they're missing a lot of things too. And I don't know that minutes are so much, but at least the, the conversation I had was, what are the topics going to be? Because people need want to know what the topics are going to be if they want to come to it. So at least if we could post it, then for sure we're not messing with any sunshine law because well, it's posted. Because at this last meeting, I was, I was kind of ill still, only I was thinking I'm not able to miss it just because I'm not able to get a copy of like accurate I was afraid to miss it, I'll say that. Okay, so that, yeah, so if we can, if you can get those from Eileen we'll and post, Eileen. yeah, post and there's those already, meetings. There's already a website up, or part of our website, so it's not hard to do. Now, I know our community meetings, they're already on the website. They've been out on Facebook. I've been sharing them because like crazy. Because they're board committees, so those are posted. Those right. Are, those Bishop Forward has a lot of stuff yeah okay so that's just i just wanted to bring that out that happened to be a conversation this week and it happened to fall under this policy so okay. i'm sorry madam chairman okay. thank you uh evd this was your request well we were talking about i put it on for latonya because we were saying do we need to start revisiting whether or not we put masks on i don't know if this is a topic for this meeting but go ahead latonya and you can i mean at the last meeting, it was approved to 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 make mask optional and to not have any quarantining. And I asked um, to um, hold off on making a choice until at least a week after break. Um, but it was chosen and everything, and now it's a couple of weeks after break and schools closed. Um, I would like to at least. Um, bring this back to the board for discussion about action. Um, I don't know what the action sh should be or could be, but I think that doing nothing has, um, I don't think that it is the only cause of things now, only I mean it's a contributor. And I think that um, it is our job to do what we can. And you, you have to have it every month. We've had a conversation every month about COVID, so you have to have another one. So it will be on the agenda next time because okay. that's something that's technically required to at least some type of conversation about COVID. And 
if there's any changes to your current plan. Okay. So, we'll so that, that, that really can be the agenda item, mm -hmm. the existing plan, COVID we, existing plan, and then you can make adjustments as you want. So probably that needs to be an agenda item, not yeah. under policy. I have Correct. it as an agenda okay. item. Thank you. Okay, good. So that's covered then. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion. Can I can I ask a couple of questions? Thank you. You're so close. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, so maybe maybe one maybe it's a, a recommendation. <laughs> at some point, I guess I look at creative entourage as being a two lane highway where we give and receive information. And so perhaps maybe a quarterly report. I think would be helpful. And they're yeah. already going to do that. Okay. But so they haven't had anything to come and share with you right. yet. Good. They're waiting to have this first meeting, and then your chair people from that committee, somebody will come and make a presentation to the board. That's excellent. Regarding well, that, so will that be a monthly, quarterly? It'll probably be monthly. Is my understanding? Will they even talk about it? And, and Marcus, you remember that conversation? Didn't, didn't that what we said? Mm -hmm. That yeah. that was because he was part well, of the. Well, Steve's interview. on the committee, aren't you? Are you on that well, committee? No, it was the oh, co-chair co co was talking today, oh, but I think sorry. when but we visited today, every we month said that they were so. going to come and do that, didn't they? Yeah. So we have yeah. every month, and so January, I, mean, I, can March, speak, April. I can speak every month about, like, updates and everything like that as well. Um, so, just because I do think it's kind of weird. It was created, and then it kind of never gets mentioned or talked about at our meetings. Well, but it... It, until you do something, well, there's like, nothing to talk about. Yeah. I know what the you problem know. is, is that there was like a meeting almost every month and it's never, I know that nothing goes on. I mean, I chill and I eat snacks. That's what I told Lori, but I know that not a lot goes on. Okay, but if it, I'm at least able to be like, okay, we chose our co-chairs and then our logo. And then we went home. You know, I mean, at least a little bit of. And we organized when our meetings were. Exactly, exactly. I mean, at least, at least. So and then, I wonder, should we? We, we put, can put that on as a vision forward. A uh, vision forward under committees. And either you okay. can do it if they're not here this month and mm -hmm. share because they won't because they yeah. won't have the meeting. And then after that, a co-chair I think is coming or a couple okay. of them will come. Yeah. So we'll start and we'll have that just as a standing thing under our other committees. Okay. You might put creative entourage, or I mean vision forward, yeah. and then in parentheses ad hoc, because that's not a true just standing. Just put vision forward committee. report. You can just put vision forward report on the time okay. you can do it, or the co-chairs can come do it. Okay. So that, that would be excellent. I, the, you know, just, I guess I would like to know with more of a, a level of certainty that we can uh, give and take information, the board, could say maybe uh, make recommendations, of course, uh, if we have different ideas, or maybe the committee could address this particular issue um, because of a timeline, for example, that we may know about that the committee may not know about, uh, just the transfer of giving and taking information. So when they report back to the Creative Entourage group that they're fully aware of what we're up against as well. And, and I would say that would be a part of, and Latani can correct me, or Steve, since he's a part of it too. Really what they're asking is for that input to come from those large group meetings. So if you have thoughts or ideas, you can be at one of those tables, write your thought or idea down, or share, and then it gets shared out to the whole group, and then that becomes part of what that committee talks about. Hey, these seem to be the three, four items that bubble to the top that need to be a topic that's talked about next time. Because even at the meetings, I never try to really give like a big opinion or to direct or change anybody's mind or put an idea i honestly i chill and listen pretty much and that's great because we want the input from the community mm -hmm. so well if we if we made a recommendation because it was a particular hot topic i think we could say that to maybe one of the co-chairs i don't think it would be good coming from Miss Williams, because she is a board member. Or Rick. Or Rick. Uh, but if we were able to you know, make that recommendation to one of the chairs or co-chairs, um, and they could report back to the committee, I think that would be, that would, you know, I think that would be a, a more honest uh, way of communicating. Uh, my second question is, and this is, I guess, the policy committee would be the place to ask this. Do teachers have to use sick time for the two days that we're, we're taking off? No. 
the snow days. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're considered, they follow under scenario mm -hmm. A. How about the staff? Uh, food service was able to come in part of the day because they chose to come in because they had to do some deep cleaning and they're coming in tomorrow. And if we have to shut down further, they'll come in to prepare meals. Maintenance custodial always comes in. Um, and then it's your 260 day contract employees that come in. Is that accurate, Dr. Krause? Yes. So Leslie. your pair, your pair professionals are, are not because uh, they're attached to kids. If the kid's not there, they, and if you go beyond your snow days and you got to make up time and they have to come in and get paid at that time. So it is a hardship for some of them. Hourly employees are, but if sometimes we have to declare like last winter, Dr. Benzal had to declare a couple of times a full shutdown. Yeah, if it's completely shut it's down, completely and everybody shut down, everybody gets, down, paid. Everybody gets yeah. paid. Yeah. Okay. Which we did once this year. Is that kind of like? Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that was last year, but yeah. It seems like yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Do yes. I have a second? I'll sit. All right. We're adjourned. We'll see you back in at five thirty. At five thirty. <laughs>